In summary, there were four major outcomes of the conference, and I'd like to uh, go briefly through each of these major outcomes. Firstly, there were a set of decisions aimed at finalizing and enhancing the implementation of the international res response to the climate crisis now and up to 2020. On the one hand, this involved the finalization of accounting rules under Kyoto to enable countries to ratify the amendments and their legally binding emission reduction commitments as agreed in Durban in 2011. After two weeks of very detailed technical discussions, parties were able to agree most of the outstanding accounting rules for the Kyoto Second Commitment period, and this work will be finalized in the next meeting. This was quite a significant outcome. Adaptation continued to receive the prominent attention that it deserves under all the convention bodies with respect to implementation between now and 2020. The most notable outcome on adaptation was the conclusion of the guidelines for developing countries in general to develop national adaptation plans. And this is a critical outcome for South Africa, um, as these guidelines can now be used to further develop the country's own national adaptation plan, which is currently underway. The second major outcome of Warsaw is the progress made in the negotiation of the climate change system to be implemented beyond 2020. This is to be captured in a new legal agreement for implementation post-2020 and is being negotiated under the Durban Platform for Enhanced Action. Warsaw was able tra to transition from the exploratory phase of the negotiations to a more formal mode of work. This was achieved by focused discussions on elements for inclusion in a new international legal agreement. A decision highlighting key components of the 2015 outcome was adopted, and the ADP is now well on its way to producing a negotiation text in time for the 2015 agreement to be reached in Paris. The third major, Warsaw, major outcome of Warsaw was progress in negotiation of means to scale up ambition in the post-2020 12 and pre-2020 period. The United Nations Environment Progs Program's 2013 Emissions Gap Report, uh, which is focusing on the gap between emissions reduction required by 2020 to limit temperature increase to 2 degrees and emission reductions pledged by countries at the moment. And this indicates that developed countries' overall emissions continue to grow instead of decrease, decreasing, which is a significant concern um, globally. Even if the current emission reduction pledges are fully implemented, the emission gap in the year 2020 will be 8 to 12 gigatons. This is what makes the decision to accelerate activities under the work plan on enhancing mitigation ambition up to 2020 absolutely vital. Then finally, the fourth major Warsaw outcome was the finalization of a very contentious negotiation on an international mechanism to deal with loss and damage caused by climate change. The key priorities for Africa and other developing countries were an outcome on the establishment of a mechanism on loss and damage due to climate change and finance as part of the urgent implementation program between now and 2020. This most recent science, as outlined in the IPCC Fifth Assessment Report, confirms that the severity of climate change impacts now and into the future pose a number of developmental, economic, social and food security challenges to developing countries. While it will be possible for some countries to adapt to climate change to a certain extent, adaptation will take time and there will be increasingly extreme climate events such as the recent super typhoon which tragically struck the Philippines just in the first week um, of the Conference of Parties, and it's absolutely impossible to adapt to, to these kinds of events. Speaking now for the Minister, we facilitated three days of challenging negotiations and concluded with a landmark COP, sorry, a landmark outcome with the launching of the Warsaw International Mechanism for Loss and Damage associated with climate change impacts. This decision outlines institutional arrangements, functions and modalities of the mechanism which aims to address loss and damage associated with impacts of climate change, 
including extreme events and slow onset events. The conclusion of negotiations on this mechanism with clear linkages to other UN framework convention on climate change mechanisms was really important to South Africa's expressed goal of achieving a high level of integration of the UNFCCC mechanisms to tackle various aspects aspects of the climate change problem.